You know, what if you could completely revolutionize the engines that power our entire world just by replacing one tiny ancient component with a beam of light? Yeah, I know, it sounds straight out of a sci-fi movie, but it might just be the future of how we burn fuel. It seems kind of crazy to say, right? But yeah, this little part is running up against a wall. It just can't break through. As we push for engines that are way, way more efficient, we're creating conditions inside them that are so extreme, the good old spark plug is officially becoming the weakest link. So here's the deal. The next generation of engines, they're all about running on what's called a leaner fuel mixture. Think way more air, way less fuel, and at insane compression ratios. Now this makes them incredibly efficient, but it also turns the inside of that cylinder into a seriously hostile place to be. And when I say hostile, I mean brutal. We're talking pressures jumping up to 25 times what they are now and temperatures soaring towards 4,000 Kelvin. That is hot enough to literally vaporize most metals. In that kind of environment, a regular spark plug needs a massive jolt, over 40,000 volts, just to make a spark. And even then, it starts to fail. See, the problems are baked right into the design. All that intense heat and pressure physically chews away at the metal prongs, the electrodes, so they just wear out way too fast. They also waste energy because being screwed into the cylinder wall means they're constantly losing heat. And maybe worst of all, the spark is always stuck in the same spot, which is almost never the best spot. We've basically hit a physical wall. So you have to ask, right? How do you make a spark if you don't have any electrodes? How do you light the fuel in the absolute perfect spot without actually touching anything? Well, the answer is surprisingly elegant. You use a focused beam of light. And this is where it gets really, really cool. The advantages are just immediately obvious. Laser ignition is non-intrusive. There are no physical parts in the chamber to wear down. You can put the spark with pinpoint accuracy anywhere you want. But here's the real mic drop moment. You can create multiple sparks all at the exact same time. I know, it still sounds like something from Star Trek, but the physics behind it all is absolutely fascinating. So let's break down how you can literally create fire from light. It all gets started at the molecular level. The magic phrase here is laser-induced gas breakdown. What happens is you focus a laser pulse with such an insane amount of intensity, we're talking over 10 billion watts per square centimeter, that its energy field is powerful enough to just rip electrons right off the gas molecules. This instantly creates a tiny, super-hot ball of plasma, and boom, that's your spark. Okay, but every fire needs a starter, right? So where does that very first free electron come from? Well, it comes from this wild quantum effect called multi-photon ionization. Basically, the laser beam is so concentrated that a single gas molecule gets blasted with a whole bunch of photons all at once. It gets such an energy overload that it has no choice but to just spit out an electron. Now, once you have those first few seed electrons, that's when the real fun begins. It kicks off a chain reaction, a total avalanche. Those first electrons soak up energy from the laser, get supercharged to incredible speeds, and then they go smashing into other gas molecules, knocking even more electrons loose. This creates a cascade that happens in a blink of an eye, forming that plasma spark. Okay, the science is cool, it's futuristic, but what does it actually do for an engine? What's the real-world payoff here? Well, the performance gains are huge. And look, we're not talking about a tiny 1% or 2% improvement. This is a fundamental game-changer for combustion itself. And the numbers really speak for themselves. You can see it right here. In these tests, a single spark takes about 42 milliseconds to burn the fuel. But when you use a laser to create two sparks at once, that time plummets to just 27 milliseconds. That is a massive drop, over 35% faster. It means you're getting a faster, more complete, more powerful burn. And a faster burn means, you guessed it, more power, a lot more. The same test showed an 11% jump in peak pressure inside the cylinder. More pressure pushing down on that piston is what it's all about. That means more power and more efficiency from the exact same amount of fuel. So, this all just sounds incredible, doesn't it? Which of course leads to the big question. If this is so much better, why isn't it in my car right now? Well, as it turns out, the leap from a cool lab experiment to a part you can mass produce by the millions is a pretty massive one. And that's really the heart of it. The science, the science is solid. We know how this works. The challenge isn't a science problem anymore, it's an engineering one. It's all about taking this amazing technology and figuring out how to make it small enough and tough enough to survive in the real world. I mean, just think about the to-do list. You have to develop powerful little lasers that can actually fit on an engine and not shake themselves to pieces. 
Then you need to figure out how to get that incredibly intense beam of light from the laser to the cylinder, probably through some kind of specialized fiber optic cable that doesn't just vaporize. And it has to do all this flawlessly for millions and millions of cycles in a chaotic, hot, messy engine. And oh yeah, it has to be a forder. So in the end, when you boil it all down, the biggest hurdle isn't the physics. It's the monumental engineering task of trying to replace a part that is simple, cheap, and has been perfected for over a century. But with the potential payoff this huge for efficiency and power, it's a challenge that is absolutely worth pursuing. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? What other simple technologies that we all rely on are about to hit their own physical limits?